Hello everybody and welcome to Rock Solid Productions where in this video we're going to review the Retrobit RES Plus 8-bit NES HDMI clone system. Hi everyone, welcome to Rock Solid Productions. I am Gary and here with you today with another contender in the realm of 8-bit NES clones. This is the Retrobit RES Plus or Retro Entertainment System. Basically what it is out of the box is it is an NES on a chip. Essentially it has the entire Nintendo Entertainment System built into this little guy here. Now it does run off of cartridges, it's not an emulator station, and it does not run ROMs. It needs physical cartridges like Cobra Triangle that we have running in the background here. Now it comes out of the box equipped as you see it here. There's only one color option. It's simply the black with the red. It has a slide switch for on off and just a momentary push button here for reset. Now it does also come with two controllers that look like this. They are definitely inspired by the original NES controllers, but they're unique on their own rights. Uh, the start and select much higher, um, almost like if you take a traditional NES controller, flip it upside down, that's where the start and select were. D-pad is about the same size, about the same placement, but it's a solid piece of plastic where on the NES version, it had little indentations in the cross on it. The B and the A buttons are a little bit different too, about the same size, but they are curved outward versus curved inward. And also, as you can see here, the A is at an angle. Um, whether or not that causes issues during gameplay, we'll find out in a little bit. Now you can find the RES Plus for about 35 bucks. That's what we paid for our system here uh, at Fry's Electronics. Um, I've seen them on Amazon for about the same price. You can order them direct from Retrobit 2 or your local participating retailer. Now, um, out of the box, the RES Plus, the big thing, again, like with many of the 8-bit clone systems that I've shown you here on the channel, is the fact that it has an HDMI output on the back. But right next to that HDMI output, it also has stereo AV output. So if you'd want to connect this to a CRT TV, say that your original NES doesn't work anymore, uh, or that you really want to preserve it and just want something that you can play NES games on your CRT, you can do that with this. Also on the back, the only other port on here is the micro USB port on the back for power. It does not use a traditional uh, barrel type connection like what the NES or the Super NES did. It uses a nice micro USB connection. Makes it so much simpler uh, when you're looking to provide power to be able to play your retro games on your television. Now one thing I will tell you, make sure you go and check out our unboxing video which I'll link to you right up there that has some more deal t details as far as everything that it comes out of the box with. I have tested the system on three different televisions. Each and every one had enough power output from the USB ports on the back side of the television to provide power for the RES, so that's really, really cool. Um, two controller ports on the front, and it does actually come with two of these controllers right out of the box. So without any further ado, let's get to some gameplay. So let's get started with Super Mario Brothers. It is probably one of the games that most people who look for retro gaming systems go and play the most. Already starting to feel like the audio is very similar. Yeah, there's the coin again. Very similar to the Hyperkin Retron HD and to the Gamers Tech 8-bit HD. The coins seem a little pitchy. Let's see here. Man, they're still got the audio just wrong. It, it's, I don't know what we need to do to get a system that actually plays the audio. Oh, and I shrunk there. Where'd Mario go? There he is. It's one of those things, it's probably that at this price point, they can't make the NES system on a chip that has the audio correct. I'm really wondering again if they aren't speeding up the clock speed internally a little bit, and that's causing it to go a little bit pitchy. Um, you know, I've got a game that will kind of help see if that's the case, and let's pop in RC Pro-Am. Mario did look good. RC Pro-Am looks good. 
I always forget if I haven't played Pro-Am for a while which button is actually accelerate versus weapons. This feels fast. I mean, I'm not saying that as like, oh my god, it's so fast. It's more like the, it feels like it's being accelerated, like it's not running at a one-to-one -one true speed like what you would get on an NES. Slipping and sliding through turns here. Took the win the first race. Let's get the second one underway here. Second one is where you get, oh, oil slick, uh, is where you can get the, the missiles. Later on, you get bombs. This is probably one of my favorite racing games of all time. Blow it up, sir. Sliding around the corners. We're going to wait a little bit for... Nah, we'll leave them in our dust. So Pro-Am plays decent but fast. Let's go to Castlevania 3. Unlike some reviewers out there who have compared the sound on Castlevania 3 to the audio on the enhanced Famicom versions, I'm only going to compare it to what it sounds like on real NES hardware. This sounds decent. It looks good. It reminds me very much of the Gamers Tech 8-bit HD. Coming through the door, and there's that little bit of flicker that's very consistent. And we're gonna go up a level here. Now, look at the money bag. You can still see it's got a little bit of a pink hue to it, but not nearly as bad as what the Hyperkin Retron 1 HD was. So the color palette, a little bit better here, at least in Castlevania 3. The game seems very responsive, although I'm getting some artifacting here. That's normally an indication of a dirty cartridge, so I probably have to clean this. I hate these little troll guys. They just jump all over the place, annoy the crap out of me. And here's the boss at the end of level one. Oh, he's got me cornered. There again, I disappeared. That's very similar to what happened in Mario, where my character sprites disappeared. Long range attack, and boom, he is dead. Castlevania 3, no compatibility issues. Let's go to my favorite beat em up. Let's go to Double Dragon. Sound, it sounds decent. It looks really sharp. Uh, controls are responsive. No real latency or lag on here. This is one of my favorite tricks. If you get the Lindas to come up the ladder, you can steal the whip from them a little bit easier. Roll out the barrel. Sorry, Brewers fan thing there. It's funny on these clone systems how you get similar issues to the original hardware. I mean, they they really do a good job, I would say, replicating the real hardware. Um, here you can see the, the glitch on the wall still exists, even playing on the RES+. Plus. All right, let's go inside because we need to fight Adobo. A little cheap trick there, you just knock the guys off the end of the conveyor belt and you can beat them a little bit quicker. It always, I always thought it was really funny how massive those guys were. It's like, where the hell do these things come from in real life? So Double Dragon play is great. We've played Donkey Kong on some of the other systems. Let's go to Donkey Kong Jr. Now, I have not played nearly as much Donkey Kong Jr. as I should have in the past. Now, this is actually the Famicom version running on my 60 to 72 pin adapter. Um, if you're not into Famicom game collecting, you should seriously look into it. The games are a lot cheaper than buying their NES counterparts, simply because there were more games purchased in Japan than in the U.S. We move through the first level without any major issue. One thing about DK Jr. is the fact that he climbs faster if you have two arms or two hands on chains or ropes or whatever. Moving over all the way to the right and up to the top base area. We're moving on to the next level here too. 
I have to say, I really need to play Donkey Kong Jr. more. I I remember the first two levels, and I remembered the fourth level, but this third one, I really don't remember. Shocking, I know. Shocking, get the pun with the... Okay, bad jokes. Moving on to the next level, and actually what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our last game, and we're going to move on to a game called YY World. This is a Famicom game that uh, John Riggs and uh, Metal Jesus Rocks both recommended, and I picked one up. Got it for about $20, $25 again on eBay from Japan, and basically it's a really cool Konami Cute them up. Um, it brings in elements from a bunch of different games. Uh, very good platforming on here. Reminds me in some ways of like uh, Mega Man. Reminds me of Gradius. And there's a couple other Konami games in here that this really reminds me of. You can switch to a between characters. Each one has their own um, tendencies and, and skill sets and whatnot. The the baby. I don't know what game that's from. Um, most of these characters, I wish I read Japanese so that I could know what games that they come from. Um, but really good uh, animation, good, you know, classic Konami music and everything on here. And in a second, we're going to go to this level reminds me a lot of Gradius. Where you're on like a rocket sled or something like that and you're shooting enemies left and right out of the air. It's, it's a fun game. You should definitely look at picking that up. So there you have some gameplay footage of the RES Plus from Retrobit. What do I think about it? Well, it's very similar to the other two systems, quite honestly, that I tested. Both the Hyperkin Retron HD and the Gamers Tech 8-Bit HD. It's about the same size. Um, now, the Hyperkin is available in two different colors. The Gamers Tech is available in one color. This is only available in one color, the black, but you basically have the black and the gray from Hyperkin, the gray from uh, Gamers Tech, and then just the black in this. Um, not really enthusiastic about the color scheme on here. I give them credit for doing something different that doesn't look like the NES. But at the same time, I want something that kind of reminds me of the NES and this doesn't really do that a whole lot. Um, I'm glad too, I've seen on other RetroBit systems, they do have a door that flips up and down to cover the controller ports. I'm glad this just has the controller ports exposed. It played everything that I threw at it very well. Um, Castlevania 3, which you saw, can sometimes have gameplay issues on clone systems. This played it without any problem whatsoever. I still really, I'm just dying for one of these systems to get the audio right because the audio, it's still just a little bit off. Um, listening to the coins here on Mario, I'll play it for you right here. You can see how the audio is pitched high, and that's very consistent between all three systems that I've tested so far. The Retrobit is no different as far as that goes. It does look better than the Hyperkin, I will say. It's not that muddy color. It seems like a very nice in-between palette between the Retrobit and what the Gamers Tech 8-Bit HD uses. It, it looks sharp. I really did like the way that it looked on my television. Sound was great, and it was also nice to be able to, to use my uh, 60 to 72 pin adapter to play my Famicom games through here, just in case if I don't want to break out the Retron 5, or if I don't want to break out my uh, two Famicoms that I have too. Um, overall, not a bad little unit at all. It's definitely worth uh, taking a look at. I would definitely suggest this over the Hyperkin Retron HD, just because of the color palette, it did look sharper. The fact that it is less expensive and again comes with two controllers. Let's talk about the controllers for a second too, because some people are gonna like the controller, some people are not gonna like the controller. And I tend to fall in the camp that I'm not a huge fan of the controller. Um, I don't like the fact that the start and select buttons have moved. If I've, there were more than a couple of times when I was playing and I went to pause and I'm reaching here because that's traditionally where the start and select button are on an NES controller. Having it up higher, that was really annoying. Um, the buttons felt really firm and stiff to me, as did the D-pad. Um, really not a huge fan, personally, of the Retrobit controller, but it's one of those things. It's, it's a very personal type of experience, and you really need to try it out to see what you think. Um, 
it wasn't bad. It didn't detract from the gameplay, but it didn't add to it. It, it wasn't something that I could see myself using for extended period of, of gameplay over something like the Gamers Tech 8-Bit HD, the Cadet from Hypercan, or even the standard NES controllers. For me, yeah, it was kind of a non-starter. But beyond that, the Retrobit uh, RES Plus, it's a solid little system. Definitely something that you should check out, and you should definitely stay tuned to our channel because we did have our recent shootout between the Hypercan Retron HD and the Gamers Tech 8-Bit HD, well, we're gonna do it again. The champion between those two, the Gamers Tech 8-Bit HD, is going to go head-to-head -head against the Retrobit RES Plus. Which one's gonna come out on top? Well, you'll have to stay tuned to see. Speaking of which, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to our channel. That way that you keep track of everything that we have going on here on Rock Solid Productions. You get uh, alerts when we have new content that goes up on the site. Please also make sure to give this video a thumbs up and ask any questions you might have down below. That way we might be able to answer those questions for you when we do our shootout between the RES Plus and the 8-bit HD. It'll be interesting to see which one is going to win a position here on my entertainment center that I have. Actually, it's not even an... God, who calls them entertainment? Child of the 80s. Sorry about that. But make sure that you stay sub subscribed. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel. Make sure you leave a comment below. If you do have any questions about the Gamers Tech 8-bit HD, about the Retrobit RES Plus retro gaming, or anything consumer electronics in general, please feel free, as always, to email us at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can also hit us up on Twitter. We're very active on there, too. Or if you really want to help the channel out, head on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, you can really help the channel out to grow, to get new hardware, new equipment, like the RES Plus from Retrobit, so that we can do these sorts of reviews for you and the shootouts that we have coming up. Again, I was Gary with Rock Solid Productions. This is the Retrobit RES Plus 8-bit NES clone system. And I want to thank you for watching. Bye.